Welcome to the Halo Outreach Podcast, where we reach out to you, the Halo community, to keep you up to date on everything that's going on in the Halo universe. What is going on, everybody? I'm your boy, Patman, here, joined by my fellow co-host, Kevin Kulex, and this is the Halo Outreach Podcast, where we reach out to you guys, the Halo community, to keep you up to date on everything that's going on with our favorite universe and gaming. So this podcast is going to be about a few different topics. We had some news about file share transfers this week, also Flight 2 news, and me and Kevin are going to go over our SPV3 reviews kind of and touch on the things that we liked and didn't like about the very popular fan made Halo CE mod. But first, before we get into all those topics, let's just uh get to know each other a little bit real quick for the week. Kevin, you have anything new going on with you this week? What have you been playing? Anything important going on? Uh, you know, obviously still playing Halo because, well, yeah, that's kind of what we do here. Right. Um, <laughs> like we, we played a little Husky Raid earlier in the week, mm-hmm. which was always a fun time. Some of the maps are pretty good. Some of the maps I feel like a little questionable on that one, especially like the one that's on Eden where it's kind of more like a flat, z- windy map. I wasn't really cr- crazy about that one. Uh, I did see one map, though, that looked like uh, like, like a control room. That yeah. was really kind of cool looking. Yeah, it's like cool. really sci-fi looking. I haven't had a chance to play on that one. I've played the, and I've put like a good amount of time in the Husky Raid, but haven't had a chance to play it sadly. But um, other than that, then um, I think I well, play a little bit of. I've been trying to keep up with Red Dead Redemption Two offline, off stream, just kind of uh, playing through that. Just like kind of like what I mentioned like last stream, where basically I know once MCC comes to PC, like yeah, that's gonna be gaming for me for the next you know. Until basically, I'm sure until Halo Infinite comes out. Oh yeah, and then uh, I guess also on just on the gaming side of things, on just been streaming, making YouTube content. Uh, recently, just hit 1,000 followers on Twitch, so yeah. that was cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, that's kind of uh, things have been kind of going on on my end of things. How about you, Pat? What you been playing? What you been up to? Well, uh, for playing, same thing, of course. Like like you said, we would be frauds if we didn't play Halo every week. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we need to do that to keep the uh, that Halo goodness thrown, uh, flowing through our veins there. So, played a little bit of Husky Raid, and like I told you, it's actually my first time playing Husky Raid. Never played it, so uh, I really like it. It's really fun. It's like Fiesta, just on steroids, just chaos as far as other games i have been playing assassin's creed odyssey like i said last last podcast but also some sea of thieves got back into that and it is a completely different game from when it launched Uh, a lot more content a lot funner i mean every game is always funner with friends but my friend my best friend who lives in new york back where uh my hometown we're very far apart and we've never really been able to play games together uh, because he refuses to buy an Xbox, and uh, you know now we could finally play games together. So that's awesome. Since since he's on PC, so um, yeah, just been enjoying that and getting into streaming a little bit lately. I'm trying to take it a little more serious. I had a lot of fun on the stream last night uh, with you. And shout out to uh, Golden Jimbo over there and and Rep Scallion. That was really fun, and we played some custom games and stuff. So that was fun. So yeah. All in all, pretty good week. Uh, bought some new stuff, too, for the stream to, you know, upgrade the, the setup a little bit. So I'm excited for that stuff. And uh, What kind of stuff did you buy there? I bought, well, first I bought a mount uh, for my two monitors so that I could get a little more room on my desk. I bought a new keyboard uh, that I absolutely love. I might actually do a review on it. And then I bought also some padding for my walls, like some foam padding, just to help the reverb in my room and stuff to make the audio just a little you know i try to upgrade where i can to help the quality of my stuff so um hopefully that makes a little bit of a difference and uh yeah that's that's about it yeah that's kind of how it is when it comes to when you're doing like content creation stuff it's just like gradual upgrades over time to eventually get to like a pretty sweet setup kind of thing because obviously like you try to do it all at once Oh, that's a bit go broke. of a wallet drain right there but you're yeah. like yeah i'll spend 40 bucks on like foam padding for my walls exactly sure. yeah you definitely know? <laughs> like or uh you know i need a new mic like i had to start out with a snowball and now i worked my way up to a yeti which was like a maybe a 50 dollar upgrade and you know sold my old snowball mm-hmm. on uh, ebay and then 
you know eventually i'll get like a nice freaking xlr mic or whatever like a mm. audio technica or something because i heard that's the way to go um but yeah it's just you know like you said increment incremental upgrades to make sure people you know recognize that you're you care about your channel you know yeah and it doesn't also have to be like crazy good you know quality just like you know good enough to where it doesn't sound like you're talking out of a toaster exactly yeah if you're just starting <laughs> out and you don't think you need to freaking buy the best of everything just you know buy what you can afford and then upgrade when you can afford it and exactly you know just focus on making content and doing what and you buy, love and look up buy used stuff too think about that like i like I recently uh, was using like the Elgato HD, mm -hmm. which only did 1080p 30 FPS or 720p 60 FPS, and I recently wanted to upgrade to 1080p 60 FPS rather than buying the brand new Elgato HD 60. I just went online to like offer up, and someone was selling in my local area for like a third of the normal price. Oh yeah, and that's what I've been using. <laughs> you know, yeah, so yeah, it's all, that's a good capture card. So, you know, just buyer, buyer beware kind of stuff. But yeah, so. <laughs> We're all into that good stuff right there. And so I guess we jump first into the, the Halo news to start yes. out the, the podcast here. Yes, yes. So onto the Halo news. File transfer uh, got announced, and me and you both did videos on this on our channels. But for those who didn't know or who are uninitiated here, anything from the legacy titles, I'll actually just read the excerpt right from 343 themselves so that we don't get any info wrong here. So um, any of the legacy title halo games halo 3 halo reach and halo 4 on the 360 they're going to let you transfer your file share from those games regarding game types and maps to mcc on pc and on xbox and it's for now just games and maps only um i don't think they said there's no plans to do anything else as far as uploading to file share correct as far as screenshots and all that yeah no screenshots and no clips either just the maps and the game modes okay so if anybody's wondering how you do this, this is right from 343 themselves. They say load up Halo 3, Halo Reach, and Halo 4 on your Xbox 360 or on your Xbox One via backwards compatibility and ensure the local files you want to copy over to MCC are uploaded to your file share before each pull. Ensure your game types are uploaded up before August 12th. So that is the date for the, uh, for the game types. August 12th is the date that you need to upload your game types onto your file share that's the day the transfer will be going down. On the 12th, please leave them there for at least 24 hours without altering so they can properly perform the copy. And I mentioned this in my video. I wouldn't even mess with it. Just in case, give it give it quite some time before you try deleting it from your file share after after that transfer goes up. Um, I if, if I have anything that I want to transfer, I'm not even going to delete it. I'm just going to leave it up there till I know it's on MCC. It says, please say, take some time to place your maps on your file shares before August 26th. So the 26th, two weeks later, will be when they are doing the map file share transfer to MCC. Um, and like we said, you know, no screenshots, anything like that. Did you have any, any, any kind of game types or maps that you were looking to transfer over? Um, I mean, I did definitely do a lot of forging back in Halo 3 and a little bit less in Halo Reach. And then I kind of like lost interest in forging just because like I would spend hours on making these maps and then no one would ever end up playing them. Right. Yeah, <laughs> because there was no was. like custom browser, which is something I've always wanted since Halo 2 and only just got added in the Halo 5. Right. Um, and so, I mean, I could probably look back and see if there's any kind of, I mean, there's some maps that kind of come to my mind that like it'll be kind of cool to play them right now, but, uh, uh, nothing really in particular. I'm like, I gotta share this with the people, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, same thing with game modes, really, because I think I generally just kind of made all my. I really was more into making maps and game modes, specific like map game mode combos, kind of things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't. I'll look in if I can get anything on there, but I'm not really too uh, stressed out about it. How about yourself, there, Pat? Yeah, same thing, really, on my end. Uh, I spent the most time probably forging in Reach uh, on Forge World, but like you said, nothing that I'm like super proud of or anything like that that i really you know need to upload i will take a look and see but um yeah nothing nothing too crazy there mm -hmm. not not to, nothing it really doesn't apply to me but i'm really glad that they're doing it i think that's a really awesome feature yeah i feel like this is kind of like an extra like additional just like here's a little bit of awesomeness for you just because we can yes kind of yeah 343 is uh, just on a roll lately yeah, and so I think it's really great that they're able to do that. Uh, understandable, probably when it comes to just like server size, because obviously they got paid for servers to make sure like you can hold this kind of information on. 
And so that's probably why it's only like a one-time transfer kind of thing. Uh, they did also mention, though, that even though you're not going to be able to transfer over your screenshots or your fil- film clips or anything like that, uh, they are looking a way to bring that over to Halo Waypoint to have it viewable on the website and downloadable on the website as well. Uh, but that they just said that looking in, like investigating it, nothing really beyond that. Right, nothing confirmed uh, yet, right? Yeah. And then uh, apparently there's a little bit of a weird thing when it comes to PC players, Pat, if you want to kind of go into, into that when it comes yeah. to file yeah, transfers. So I, I got some opinions on this one, but um, we'll see, you know, what happens. But for all the PC players out there who do not have an Xbox, I don't know how this is going to work. So this may be a problem. So if you're on PC and you want to have your file share accessible on your PC when MCC launches, then you need to load into MCC on an Xbox after the update to make those available to you on a PC. And I'm just not sure how the heck that's gonna work if you're just a PC player, which I'm sure a lot of people are, and don't have an Xbox. I mean, for me, that's not a problem. I have have two Xboxes, so not a big problem, but that's not everybody in this world. So I'm curious to see how they're gonna answer that. What do you you think about that? I have a feeling it's probably something to do with it being through Steam. That's probably Mm -hmm. my guess where it's probably something because it's, it's definitely have to be something that's linked to your xbox account right right and there has to be probably that's probably like the roundabout way they can make it work with having to work with steam and their interface there's probably some back-end nonsense that's you know really annoyingly complicated and just too much work to deal with and they're like well let's just do this roundabout way of doing it kind of thing right and so but even then though like what they said that um isn't it that like file share or something that's not even gonna be available and reach on PC when it launches anyways? Or was it just cut or was it just Forge, right? Or they said like uh, Forge, Forge and and um yeah, Forge is not gonna be available at launch. Forge and theater. Forge right? and theater, correct. That's yes. why they actually did this transfer in the first place so that people could have some custom game like content to play um mm-hmm. you know in the meantime until they get that up and running. True, yeah, because like, like, my custom game experience with Halo is such a, is such a core aspect when it comes to playing classic Halo. Oh, absolutely. That, yeah. like, you need to give people kind of like a day one, available day one experience when playing on PC. Because you, know, you know anyone who's playing the game on PC is like, I want to experience it just how I did 10 years ago. <laughs> shots Not fired. Recorded. Yeah, shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, I hope uh, if, if there's anybody from 343 listening to our podcast now, do that with infinite please day one uh custom game browser would be awesome day one please for infinite we've had five years so. please that, that's something that, again that's a feature i wanted in halo since halo 2 exactly like, yeah. when, like online custom games became a thing and i was like oh if there was only like a way you can browse through matches people posted up it would be amazing exactly they finally did it in halo 5 but i feel like it gets underutilized a little bit and it was a little too late how, right well it kind of came like what like a year after a year or want, two maybe yeah, after the release of halo years, 5 yeah but even then though like i think it's just this is the issue with just custom games in general in halo 5 it just runs it's really buggy and slow and laggy yeah when it comes to people like joining in and jumping out of matches in custom games mm-hmm. to where like i've had it happen so many times especially if you have like 12 people in the lobby which i've had before when trying to play custom games that, like if Two people are joining in, but then three people are, you know, two people jumping out, but three people joining in. That like literally, my game is frozen for like five minutes straight, and I can't do anything. Jeez! And if I quit the build, then I lose the custom game. I'm not hosting, and everyone gets disconnected. And yeah, it's, it's a hassle. Right. So if they can improve the performance on that, then it would be greatly, uh, it'd be a huge feature within Infinite that really kind of keep the game alive oh, yeah, beyond I mean, just the initial release. Where like it would keep, I don't, don't want to say flaky fans, but like. Um, casual fans maybe casual fans who kind of just hop on and play whatever's new and then kind of hop on once they're yeah. like okay i've experienced the core experience of the game i'm done playing you know kind of thing yeah that's definitely a pillar of halo like i mean mm-hmm. just just um it helps the longevity of the game too it's just like mod support like i'm really excited when mod support will finally come to mcc i mean i know they said it's not official that they're looking into it but i would hope they would add that because that just helps the longevity of a game like it just that could li- mm-hmm. i mean look at look at custom edition which we'll touch on later you know like it's still being utilized to this day however many years later which is insane so um that's why, was, that's why, go ahead sorry i'll say it's one definitely one of those things where you just need to give players the ability to do what they can with it uh exactly. rather than have and don't worry about like, so much about curating the content i say just like you gotta get like kind of like what they did with the grassroots program right 
And so I think it's probably if you go come across that same kind of process when it comes to mod support, I'd say, like give players the avenue to be able to create content and post things, make it accessible to people, then let the community run with it. Exactly. I exactly. I don't know if they're going to go try to go with like the fallout route of having like, you know, curated mods that are like, you know, totally fine. Cause I'm sure, you know, they, I mean, I understand the three for three probably doesn't want to have like, you know, some weird ass hentai mods when it oh, comes yeah, to definitely. You know, yeah, there has to be some sort of censorship. Yeah. With the rule, because it's rule 34, man, it's going to happen. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. People are weird fucks. So, you know, it's going to exactly. happen. Uh, there was Whoa. some good news though about uh, file share. You want to touch on that? Yes, of course, Pat. Uh, so uh, the thing is that they're actually going to be a little bit larger file shares when it comes to the file shares on the MCC. And so then you'll be able to hold more content on there so you guys can share more and play more, which is going to be obviously more the better when it comes to that stuff for sure. Exactly. Now, I'm not quite sure how they're going to divide it out. They just kind of said that we're going to increase the we're looking into increasing the uh, capacity of the file share. Right. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to divide it up as in, like, that's the Halo 3 file share. You have your Halo 4, and then you have your Halo Reach file share. Or if it's just going to be your MCC file share. Yeah, like, I wonder, no word I wonder on how that. that's going to work, yeah. Yeah, no word on that yet. Obviously, it's just kind of a, a detail that sure needs to be worked out right now at the moment. But it's happening, so mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. All right, and so, so uh, on to the flight news, right? Flight number two, Fire Flight. Fire Flight or Fire Fight? Well... I mean, take your pick your poison there. I, guess, uh, I like I, I, fire I, I, flight. Oh, like is that a mispronunciation or a pun? Yeah, ooh, the mystery <laughs> continues. So yeah, they uh, on on the blog post that three four three did, they actually talked about the participation of flight number one, which of course was a couple weeks ago, and it was just the tip of the spear campaign mission, and not many people, including us, sadly, played <laughs> cue the sad music there, <laughs> cry. Uh, we did not get in. But the participation uh, for that event or for that flight was amazing. They uh, said it was way above what they expected. Uh, 60%, almost 61%, 60.7% of people who got that email participated in the flight. And over 1,700 times that mission was played by those people. And I don't know if you know anything about the, the actual numbers. I heard it was only over 100 people got invited. But then I think 343 said under 1,000 got invited. So, I mean... That's a big gap from 100 to 1,000, but still, that's a that's a lot to be playing that mission over and over and over. Because you know, you know, some people probably didn't even uh, play it again. So obviously, a lot of people replayed that mission. Oh yeah, uh, I they I mean, three for three definitely said just under a thousand. I'm assuming probably 900 something. Then mm-hmm. if they're saying under a thousand, uh, I mean there were definitely a good amount of people that definitely got uh, that I know played it. Uh, sadly, I wasn't one of them. They probably, I think if you and I were added in, it might have bumped it up to a you know point eight. Oh, oh yeah. You know? <laughs> I think I think we would have went up to two thousand. I would have been playing that freaking mission over and over and over. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, apparently, like I'm, you know, they didn't really use any comparison numbers when it comes to like the MCC fight pers- uh, participation, right? Uh, precipitation, like it's rain or something. But <laughs> precipitation. <laughs> That's just how much that's how sweaty these kids are getting, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No, but uh, yeah, so like sixty point seven, like you might hear that's like kind of low, but they never really compared it to like what the MCC was. Right. But um they you know, three three for three mentioned about how or I should say Sketch mentioned how uh they would uh, kind of expect a little bit lower since it is just one campaign mission. I mean, many people, I'm sure there's plenty of people who just play, probably just played it once. Like, yeah, it's MCC and PC. Yeah, cool. yeah, like, oh, cool. Maybe twice, maybe three times you really care. Yeah, late sure night. But, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> and then I'm sure, but then I'm sure there's plenty of streamers out there that probably play like four, five, six, seven, eight, ten times, you know, kind oh, yeah. of things like that. Definitely. Um, but it's actually really cool to hear like that many people are still like got in and played. And it seems like 343 was really happy with how the whole flight as a whole went as well. Uh, rather positive and that you know things went went without a hitch for the most part just besides like individual like anecdotal problems like maybe some hardware issues going along with that or something right uh, but the the survey response on average was 4.6 out of 5 yeah that's really good it's pretty damn good yeah um, if, you know, if you guys ever participated in any of the flight programs when it comes to the MCC but generally at that I was I was part of that flight program from the beginning and that it was um, basically you get a series of questions rated one through five kind of thing. Right. One being the worst, five being the best. 
And it was like roughly about 10 ish questions you would get. And I know, and so that basically after averaging out all those answers, 4.6 out of 5 was pretty damn good. I would say for out, out of like probably, I don't know how many people voted in, but I'm guessing at least 500. Right. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got to keep in mind too that, um, you know, people might think that participation is low, uh, like 60%, but it was one email that got sent out. So if you weren't constantly checking your email or, you know, on top of your things, and then it was only for, you know, what, two days or two or three days yeah. that the flight was. So if you were busy that weekend or whatever, you know, they, they didn't, ex they, they definitely said they were pleased with that participation amount. So I'm glad that they're getting the feedback, um, you know, that they needed. And I guess I'll throw in there too, that I did uh, play reach on PC at outpost discovery. And I was trying to track down sketch or somebody that actually knew it. Cause I asked like a couple of uh, mixer streamers and stuff. Cause they were like basically in, in charge of that section. If it was still the same build that the flight was, or if it was a more updated build because it was a week later and nobody could give me an answer. But I remember reading on one of the blog posts, like the big one that they did that people complained about the feeling of the vehicles in, in the flight. And that I, you know, actually mirror that same sentiment. Everything when I was out of a vehicle felt so smooth and so good. I was, I'm like extremely excited to play this freaking game on PC but yeah when i was in a warthog the sensitivity just felt off and i didn't have much time to mess with my settings either so maybe that was a reason but i just figured i'd throw that in there how i felt about the uh about that i think that yeah, i think they do have like a vehicle sensitivity setting if i'm not mistaken yeah, or i'm sure like they do person sensitivity setting they have or like a, it's a ads sensitivity something like that they have yeah uh yeah, they, see, like they, I was, they go into go they, ahead they go into that level they go into that level of detail when it comes to the options for pc so oh, i can have like a true yeah. pc port for the mcc well that's what uh, i was so doing i was like messing around with my settings for a while and then there she's like oh well everybody looks ready starting your 10 minute timer now and i'm like wait i'm in my settings oh, <laughs> yeah so i mean uh, actually, I remember you, you, uh, I think you tweeted at me or you DM'd me or something, but like you're playing, uh, Firefight, like Halo ODST Firefight on an Xbox One mm -hmm. at, OD at Outpost Discovery. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, do you want to go a little more detail about well, that? Well, <laughs> like, I couldn't tell you. I see, I, I actually posted this to Reddit and it actually got quite a few likes. Like, I think like it was 200 likes or something like that. And I had some That's people good. comment on it and they were like, a lot of people said, you know, that, that it looked different than because there was changes made to the HUD in MCC compared to the original 360 version of ODST. And people said that it looked like the updated MCC version, but then other people said, no, I was at the event. It was, it was actually just um, the backwards compatible version of ODST. So I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't get a chance to oh, actually play it. I just took a picture of people playing it because I was like, you know, I've already... I was more excited yeah. to be in that reach line for PC, but I thought, you know, when they did that blog post, they said something that they had people working on, you know, they had people working on something redacted, you know, they didn't want to say what it was. And I thought, Hey, you know, maybe that's firefight from ODST because it really, besides reach on PC, that's one of the most requested features for what mm -hmm. people wanted uh, to change with MCC. So I could totally see that coming. Um, but yeah, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah so i uh, when you I, I saw you tweet that i'm like wait are they like low-key just like putting mcc fire or lgc firefight on xbox one right and just like not yeah i mentioned that to anybody exactly like, that's how oh, i was like I, I, I was like there's no way i'm the only one that picked up on this was, yeah it was the backwards compatible version yeah, yeah supposedly yeah. but uh supposedly. yeah I, you know like i said i had people say both things and on reddit like oh that's definitely an mcc version of of odst because i could see the hud and it's different than the like the compass is different than the um 360 version i'm just like i i don't know i mean also the picture you shared was kind of like it dark was, and a yeah. little blurry as well so i can imagine people being completely wrong like classic well. classic <laughs> leak picture you know where they're like never high yeah. quality and i always trash on people for that and then i do it myself so yeah <laughs> exactly yeah so um uh, do you want to talk about uh why no xbox flighting uh right now because i get a lot of comments on my videos i'm sure you do too about why oh, xbox yeah. isn't getting flight uh, especially with my uh, flight announcement video, I, I just po posted up. Uh, um, it was just talking about like so many, so many Xbox players were like, "Bruh, what about me?" Basically, right <laughs> on these, and uh, 
you know, it's, I, I've always thought it was kind of one of those things, like, if you kind of, like, thought about it, it kind of makes sense why. Because, uh, obviously, they want to, you can tell that they want, the 343 wants to do, like, a universal release when it comes to Xbox and PC. You have a universal release where they both are playing at the same time, right. rather than, like, some, like, staggered release kind of thing, so which kind of diminishes the hype levels a little bit. Because, to me, it looks like this game is probably going to be released in September, probably somewhere in time around there. Because we're probably getting there. Thir- I'm guessing we're getting a third flight for playing multiplayer, and um, maybe even a fourth one. Because uh, Sketch does mention how they're going to be wanting to add Xbox players into it. But the reason why there is no Xbox right now, Flight Two is looking to only be PC again for Firefight, and that's mainly just because there's so many more variable variables that you need to take in consideration when it comes to uh, releasing a game on PC than on Xbox. Because Obviously, almost everybody, every single person's PC setup is going to be different. Exactly. There's so many different variables when it comes to that. And you can like do plenty of in-house testing, hardware testing on an Xbox because everyone's Xbox is the exact same. Right. For the most part, obviously, you have like Xbox One S, Xbox One X's, and you know, the all digital editions, like all the different versions of Xbox. Right. But it's only all like, one platform, you know? All one platform is only like what of all the Xboxes, like what five, di- four different variables, three different you know setups compared to like thousands, like un- <laughs> compared to like unlimited settings right. uh, or combinations on in the out in the wild. So that's why they do need to do more testing on PC to make sure it works properly, especially also releasing it on a different platform like Steam and things like that. So like I said, so many things taking taking consideration. Exactly. So, uh, but you know, I understand people Xbox players, you know, pains being like, dude. I want to play Reach right now. How come all the PC players get to, but now I don't? Right. And so I actually, uh, I saw it so many times on my uh, quest- my comment section, I figured I'd go on Twitter and actually ask some of the guys at 343, be like, hey, why no Xbox, basically? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I tweeted out post them, Sketch and Unishack, just, and I said it was like, I've been seeing, when I said in the, my tweet was like, I've been seeing a lot of comments on my about Xbox players being left out on these flights. Uh, I have my assumptions why, but any word why Xbox players aren't part of the, these flights. I'm assuming it's, it creates unnecessary work that slows down production of MCC on to, to PC. And I actually Sketch uh, replied to it saying uh, Xbox will be included a, at a later date. There's a lot more work to be done on the PC side. Xbox is more of a known quantity, but uh, there will be reach flights on console. So pretty much like what I'm assuming as well. So I think the reason why you don't, you know, out of courtesy, you might be thinking, well, just out of courtesy, give them like an Xbox flight as well. But what that really does is create a lot more work for uh, the team to bring MCC to the PC. So ultimately doing these courtesy flights for Xbox players would ultimately slow down the production and release of the game coming to the Xbox and PC. Yeah, like I mean... So like, so they have to improve efficiency on like work time and try to get the game out as soon as possible. They're not doing Xbox flights right now. Yeah, and I it, that's the last thing we need is another debacle with MCC's launch. So like I'm just mm-hmm. all for them taking their time with PC. And on top of that, like you said, they're, they're already stretched thin at three four three for who's working on this PC port. Like they have two partners already, and what Ruffian and Splash Damage, I think. Yep. Um. So that's that's just. You know, you you don't want to add that much workload to them. Obviously, most of the studios focus on Infinite. There's a very small team helping, you know, do this MCC PC stuff. And then it I, is I, a really small team. Yeah, actually, it's like well, like maybe like 15, 20 people working right. on it. <laughs> yeah. And then you know, like on top of that, I, I'm very like I, I've been very passionate about this with my subscribers, and like you know, I understand your sentiment about you know what about Xbox, but at the same time, we have. MCC, MCC on Xbox already. We have those five games. We have Reach on Xbox already. You could play it on your 360. You could play it on your Xbox One via backwards compatibility. And I'm pretty sure it's Xbox One X enhanced. So it's basically the the version that's coming to MCC. So you know, like you know, for the people who don't have Reach and haven't played it yet, you know, yeah, you, you know, people want to get that as part of MCC because they're excited about that, but. You know, these PC players haven't had a Halo game since Halo 2 Vista back in, like, 07. So we're, we're like, 12 years they've been waiting for a Halo game. So, I'm you know, I, I understand the Xbox players' anger and frustration or whatever, but 
at the same time let the pc players have a little you know this is coming for me i'm a console guy i'm an xbox guy but you know let the pc players do their thing you know let them let them have some fun with halo let them let 343 work on this and get it right uh because we don't we don't need that debacle that was the original launch of mcc to happen again on pc that's the last thing halo needs right now halo isn't going trending upwards right now that's the last thing we need but it's my halo and i want it now <laughs> yeah that's how some people are man but um, yeah, okay. yeah I, I think we spent a good amount of time on, on that news you want to move on to the uh ranked halo 3 uh playlist being added and then the competitive stuff yeah, yeah for sure okay so yeah uh there was recently a place update when it comes to the uh the competitive side of thing when it comes to mcc or not the guy comes to mcc uh they removed halo 3 team arena and replaced it with halo 3 team slayer ranks uh which i think is probably the best move because obviously uh, i thought having team arena and team hardcore for halo 3 was rather redundant it's like would you like to play with radar and unbalanced settings or would you like to play with no radar and balanced settings <laughs> right and they're like, well, I guess no radar and balance settings sounds pretty good to me. And so that's why why that's that's why I think they kind of helped reduce that redundancy. Uh, ultimately, I personally would like to see just like have the hardcore settings of your game for each game be the ranked mode, just to help consolidate players who want to kind of sweat it out. Because obviously, with MCC, though it has gained a certain amount of popularity since well over the last year, it's still a rather small game. And sometimes when you're searching late at night like past 9 p.m., especially for me, like West Coast time, it gets a little difficult trying to find matches. So that's my opinion when it comes to that. But I would think uh, a ranked Team Slayer is certainly something that would be a lot better than just ranked Team Arena. Uh, so you get that to look forward to. And talking about the competitive side of things, we got we recently had the uh, Halo 3 uh, Rise Till Dawn Red Bull 2v2 tournament happen recently over in Chicago, which was kind of an interesting event. Um, the thought the concept of it sounds really cool but then the actuality of it i think didn't exactly play out as i thought it would play out because basically what would happen the reason why they call it rise told on is because literally they didn't start until like the eat until the sun set and then they literally played halo 3 2v2s throughout the entire night until the grand finals were played like basically when the sun was coming up so they like pulled an all-nighter basically like yeah, the they middle days literally pulled an all-nighter on this tournament which i think is like a cool concept mm -hmm. but then practicality wise i think it's not the best move just because like you know i i you know i was streaming that night too so i didn't get a chance to catch most of the games i know mean, i did watch like single hail clips posted like a highlight video of the whole thing mm -hmm. uh, so i definitely watched that and uh it's just that like the whole, the whole idea of like streaming a tournament right so people can watch it but when you're streaming it while everyone's sleeping not many people are going to watch it you know right right <laughs> though i think it might be one of those things like that it's more just kind of like maybe for like the committed competitive community themselves because i imagine that being a blast yeah absolutely yeah. it was something apparently, different you know apparently they even had like a pancake artist there <laughs> yeah, as well I saw that. who was like be able to like they were like doing like uh, intricate drawings of like of pancakes of like you know energy swords and master chief helmets and things like yeah. that i've seen some Pretty awesome Twitter pictures about that. Yeah, I saw Bravo's. And, uh, it didn't look too too mm -hmm. good compared to other people, but you know. <laughs> so, but uh, so there actually was a big surprise that happened. Who won that tournament? It was actually the the two v two the team of two of Trippy and Penguin actually won the entire tournament. Well, walked away with five thousand dollars in that one, which is pretty nice. Um, which is kind of surprising because you had like greats matching together to go into this tournament, like um sage black was ryan noob and commonly roy box was obviously roy and lunchbox which a legendary duo right there by themselves yeah. falling esports was uh neighboring eco another really good combo gms gabriel and fantasy uh In infinite was boobadoo and tusk reciprocity was snipe down and ace which ace was coming off probably his best performance he's ever had from the last halo uh three tournament mm -hmm. that was uh over in uh dallas the dallas uh 44 tournament where they think i think he finished second place mm -hmm. they, they only lost the talks and so like these are some like really well named known names going into this tournament and i was like and i saw trippy and penguin and i saw that, that name combo i was like yeah i don't really see those those two guys maybe you know they could bury a tie for like a you know bottom you know, pool number or something like that, but I don't expect them doing too much because there was a lot of teams that signed up for this. Mm -hmm. 
But um, they jumped in to this and just absolutely dominated the tournament. I think they only lost like two maps throughout the whole thing. They even swept. It was a, the finals was um, Trippy and Penguin versus Snipe Down and Ace, and they swept Snipe Down and Ace three zero. Jesus. Yeah, I was gonna ask you because I'm kind of I'm not well versed in the esports scene anymore. Like I know who Lunchbox is, and you know I know the old names like Walsh, Walshy, and um, you know like the T squared combo and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and Pistola and all them. But um, yeah, I never heard of these names. That, like, are these guys? Were these guys, like, did you know who they were before the tournament started? Like, are they known like that, or are they just, like, complete underdogs? Uh, most of the people that finished in, like, the top eight were all rather notable people within the competitive community. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did see uh, there's one team that finished, like, they, there was a four-way tie for fifth to eighth, and that was uh, NG Owl City, which mm-hmm. uh, Vital and Mag and Too Good. So I never heard of those guys, but you know they finished. You know they tied for fifth, which was pretty awesome. But like a lot of the other guys, especially like Ryan New, you know, Roy, the Roy Box combo, um, Trippy and Penguin, who actually used to be on Reciprocity with Snipe Down as well. You know the other guys like Ace, Boo Doo Boo, and stuff like that. Like and Gabriel and Fancy are kind of like up and comers within the community, the uh, competitive community as well. And so you got a nice mix of like established newcomers, some older names, and also some people that you've never even heard of before. Kind of do well in this tournament as well i just I'm mad i didn't really get a chance to really watch most of it because i was either streaming or asleep <laughs> yeah. during the whole time and i really tried w- watching those finals but it was like 2 30 in the morning for me and i just like i just i literally just fell asleep while watching that's yeah. also because 2v2s aren't like crazy entertaining to watch you know right they're rather slow pace i noticed that a lot of games were fishing finishing uh because of time limit not because of score limit uh, okay uh, generally with like the really good teams though that's when you saw games going score limit uh you know, that's look, why like, we gotta yeah. we gotta get into uh i'm telling you man we gotta get into two v2s when infinite comes out so we can uh we can get in one of them <laughs> tournaments there hey yeah, man I, I got i just gotta you know start some g fuel and just crunch up some oh, exactly. doritos and then we're good to go exactly just inject g fuel <laughs> right into my veins i'll be like yo nick uh can I get that discount code real quick so that I can, you know, just have it into my veins, please? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so like the the tournament itself though was pretty cool. I think it's a cool concept, and uh, obviously competitive anything competitive Halo, I'm happy with. Just like having that happen still. Um, I really like what three four three is doing. It was doing like this. Um, avoid. Uh, sorry for the pun, but this grassroots approach when it comes to hosting Halo tournaments, mm-hmm. it's more just like giving the community the ability to do these things that they want to do, rather than like this has to be a, a three four three sanctioned events, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Which obviously that's a whole nother. You know, just give them all the logistics, and we'll just give you the Xboxes and those live stream code. You know, right? <laughs> and so. uh I think this is great. Uh, also, it kind of helps already fill in that gap in between when we have the uh, the face it event that happens uh, for Halo Three Four Three Four is over in London. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head when that happens. I'm thinking September, but I can't remember exactly. But uh, face it's actually huge when I, over in, in London when it comes to uh, esports. Like that's like one of the biggest names in esports over in London to uh get partnered with so then congrats for 343 and partnering with those guys because that's gonna be great because i think they do a lot of work with uh with csgo actually it's kind of their main thing mm. and csgo is gigantic over in in uh competitive csgo is huge over in europe and like it's actually it's actually the exact opposite when it comes to the competitive scene when it comes to csgo and uh halo we're like obviously halo is very like north american focus on like good teams mm-hmm. but then and like your European teams really struggle, uh, but then like it's the exact opposite when it comes to CS:GO. Where like it's hu- CS:GO is competitive, is huge in Europe, and not so much in uh, America here. But uh, that's why like Shroud, guys like Shroud became such a huge name because they were like the only NA team that actually made a name for themselves within the competitive scene. Right. And so that's so like that's so that and then face it was one of those uh, e leagues, I guess you call them whatever that kind of was uh, involved with that so for halo to get involved with that it's really huge help get that market over in europe to grow a bit more and so then more people get excited for it i mean i've definitely seen uh, a lot more uh european guys kind of hop back on the tw- uh twitch the stream like bashford has been playing a lot of i've noticed playing a lot of uh halo 3 he's trying to get inside that tournament i've seen jimbo kind of hop on a bit more as well 
And so, uh, yeah, it should be kind of a, well, it should just be awesome to kind of see what happens the rest of this year before it comes to Halo competitive side of things. I love it at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll probably uh, just because trying to uh, get back into it, I'll, and, you know, and keep the conversation going with you about it. I'll probably try to catch a couple of events, <laughs> uh, you know, just to get back into the swing of things. But depends, all depends on how much time I have, you know. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's cool. I, I thought that sounded like a really cool event and. I'm sure we will be doing some all nighters once Infinite comes out. So, uh, oh yeah, you know that would sure. be fun. <laughs> but uh, let's get into the SPV three yes. uh, impressions and our kind of little mini reviews right here. If, if anybody wants to see a more detailed, fleshed out review, I think me and you did almost about a 15 minute video each about yep. uh, what our opinions were. So you guys can go check that out uh, on our respective channels. But uh, I'll let you go ahead and lead off if you like. What, what did you like? What did you dislike? A couple things about uh, SPV3. Well, I definitely like how they, not only did they add more content to SPV3, but they also improved the visuals a lot. Because actually that was a big gripe of mine for SPV3 when they, they first kind of had this main release like last year. Is that I felt like the visuals, like though enhanced and improved, I feel like it just didn't like look as good as it should or like it didn't look as cohesive as it should i should say Mm -hmm. like it definitely was an improvement from original ce graphics uh but like the ce graphics felt very cohesive and the textures and things like that and the color saturations of like that felt very cohesive to where like it all kind of worked together where i feel like in uh spv 3s release last year like i felt like the greens being very like saturating kind of like almost like to me it kind of like it just wasn't pleasing to my eye, basically. Right. Um, I definitely noticed that they toned down that a bit. They retextured a lot of things as well. Even on like their re- their remastering of Master Chief, they did some retexturing on there as well to help improve that. The lighting was greatly improved as on top of that, and um, also like just like so like the, obviously like the visual standpoint, things improved all across the board. Uh, comes the gameplay wise, I mean, like it was still kind of the same game. Like you had the same guns, same missions, and things like that. Obviously, with SPV three, they also did uh, add in their own sections of two maps as well, which kind of play around different kind of aspects of what they could do with uh, the engine and for Halo C. Mm-hmm. And then uh, obviously, like the and also they added in like completely new campaigns, like the uh, the original mod campaign of uh, Project Lemuria. Which uh, apparently, uh, I've, someone commented on my video saying that it was actually released in 2010 was right. when that original mod was released. I thought it was 2014 because that was like the earliest video I could find of it. And so then, adding that Project Lemoria was such a great addition to SPV3 because uh, I also got the, fa- the SPV3 three facelift as well. And I think just like the campaign itself was able to capture the scale of halo really well yeah absolutely like it it felt like i was like a soul like a i felt like even though i was playing as a spartan i felt like you know i was playing like as like a a little soldier within this big war atmosphere level scale and things like that like it really helped capture that gameplay um i would say that the voice acting felt a little flat at times mm-hmm. of course saying you're not working with trained professionals like seed you know like that right. yeah obviously like you know combat evolved did but like even then though like even though i'm not a vo- tr- classically trained voice actor like i've been able to put machinimos together that sound halfway convincing you know yeah definitely and so and so uh some of that that's like my only gripe with that and uh and then i also i guess my only other gripe would probably just be like some of the missions that were dark were really dark yeah and yeah, i definitely. kind of have to see uh especially like elites and things like that and also, I think like the, some of the, the sensitivity for the game as a whole is a bit high. Um, you know, because I'm, it's not like I'm foreign to playing games on PC. Like I've played plenty of Battlefield three and four on PC, and um, Battlefield Battle, uh, Battlefront on PC as well. Uh, just various other games where like I'm able to tune the sensitivity that makes me feel comfortable that I'm like okay with. But I feel like SPV 3s lowest sensitivity would be still really high for most games. Especially with the advanced AI that you have in this game as well, because like normal is not normal difficulty. No, it's, it's, hard, like, man. it's like it's like a sweet spot between heroic and legendary, yeah. really. 
He really is. And, and I know you ran into this issue as well with, with one of the missions, which we'll, I'll let you transition to that later. Once. But, um, like, uh, like with like elites being able to like, they duck and dive so much more yeah. in this game. It's kind of like almost unfair, but like, it's just, you know, it's, it's, this game's meant to challenge you more. Cause obviously people are going to be playing this are much more like hardcore fans who've definitely played the game through multiple times. So you gotta give a little more of a challenge to players to kind of make, ret- retain their attention, you know, kind of thing. Exactly. And so like normal difficulty is highly suggested in your first playthrough when it comes yes. to playing SVV three. And so like, if they could lower down the sensitivity, uh as a whole i think that'd be really great so then like i can track targets a lot better and um maybe brian may make it so like the darks weren't so dark so you can actually see things right so, at times but other than that though like svv3 is a must play if you're a fan of just combat evolved in general exactly and it was also a great way to kind of get your foot in the door when it comes to playing halo on pc Absolutely, yep. I agree mm-hmm. with that. Um, so, uh, what were your thoughts ahead. on that? Dan? Okay, uh, yeah. So, uh, I think it's really cool that we have these two differing, like, uh, you know, experiences with SPV3. Since you know, you played the original, uh, you know, so you mm-hmm. went in with it. This was completely new for me as an experience because, like I said, I I haven't really been PC gaming long. Uh, last few months, I built. I mean, I had a decent PC before, but I never considered gaming on it. Um, so this was my first foray into Halo on PC besides like playing custom edition way back in, when I was like in high school. So I was really excited to play this. And as a new person coming in, I absolutely loved it just from the new weapons, the new, um, the new vehicles they added from other Halo games, the new enemies and stuff that came back from other Halo games. It was really, really fun. I was honestly blown away because I've never really experienced a mod like this. This is, like, like you've said before, really isn't a mod more than it's. Almost, it's like its own thing. It's 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 like a remaster of Halo One. It's like a a best of hit, like best of hits kind of CD album or something. You would do it. You just everything that you love yeah. about Halo is in there, and it all flowed really well. Like you mentioned, the sandbox never felt too overwhelming or anything. Like it just. It felt like Halo. It felt like, you know, once you stepped onto the Halo ring, just like in Halo 1, you got that sense of scale, awe, and wonder, and like, man, I'm just a little tadpole in this really big pond. Mm. Uh, now, that's what I call Halo 2552. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what you're saying about the greatest hits kind of thing. Like, But they also added in new stuff. Like, there was so, plenty of new guns in the game, too. Yeah. Because they added in, they either created new guns for the game, or they added in content that was originally cut from CE as well. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, they had so that, some, like, scrapped ideas and stuff. That was really cool. I absolutely mm-hmm. loved the missions that they had the new missions that they added like the arbiter mission of course i'm a huge fan of thel vadami or well what he was vadami now he's vadam or whatever um but (laughs) that was awesome to see and you know they even had lore stuff like terminals and things like that i thought that was really cool and shout out to masters man for um i didn't i never expected to get a review copy of that game you know because they were looking for bigger youtubers like you know this other guy in here that's with me but uh (laughs) but you know he uh he went ahead and gave me a code anyways and um i really appreciate the transparency Mm -hmm. that i had with him like that's what i wanted to do is give a shout out to him and the developers like anytime i had an issue they were right there to respond and offer assistance because i did have some issues and i mentioned that in my review um i had some really bad frame stutters at points but yeah, changing yeah changing certain settings helped that with with me um and then you know after i put my review out a lot of people made it known to me in the comments like oh well if you would have changed this setting you would have had 60 frames animations because it looks janky and stuff i'm like and you know it's like enable chimera or whatever it's called and uh and I'm like, I don't know what Chimera is. You know, I don't know what that setting yeah. does. So I, you know, and I think they, you said they did change that with the new launcher, right? It actually tells you what it does. Yeah. If you like hover over it, then it'll like kind of give you a, a little, like little sentence about like what it does, which before it really it didn't before. So yeah, they, before updated, when we yeah, were playing it. Like, which is another thing they actually brought in was they made their own launcher for the game as well. That kind of just takes you through the process of downloading this game properly so you can play it. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I really, um, 
yeah, I plan on going back and playing that. And one of my main gripes with the game, um, I do agree with you on the voice acting, especially in Project Lumoria. I thought a lot of the lines fell flat. The voice acting in the Arbiter mission was actually pretty good. I think they actually just took lines from Keith David and just, you know, from other Halo games and like, mm-hmm. you know, spliced them all together, which was cool. But they but, still had their own voice acting on those missions as yeah, well. Yeah, which, the other, yeah, the other um, elites yeah. and stuff, which were... Which were, there was a slight cringe, but yeah, you can tell bit. like they were doing what they can with it. Exactly. Uh, it's kind of thing I kind of noticed with Lemoria as well. Like there was a little bit of like suspending your disbelief kind of uh, feeling. I think I had with it. It's like as long as you just kind of if you just go along with it. Yeah. When uh, it comes to like um, the animations or like the voice acting and things like that. If but if you kind of just get the if you kind of just more look for like the message that you're just trying to get across, then it kind of it enhances your experience a little bit more because they definitely reached for the stars when it comes to making oh, a yeah. mod. Absolutely. They definitely, yeah. they definitely did the best. I can tell they did the absolute best that they could with making it a mod yeah, exactly. <laughs> a to make this campaign. Yeah. I mean, and that's so, the, that's the beauty of the Halo job. community, right? Like, you mm-hmm. know, just how passionate the fan base for Halo is. And you could tell how passionate it was, you know, all these people that put their blood, sweat and tears into this project oh, yeah. that lasted I mean, they've been working on this for a long time. Like, I knew about SPV3 before playing it. Um, like I said, I just never gamed on PC, so I wasn't that interested in, in trying it. But um, another thing that I did want to mention as far as a negative was, yeah, the difficulty, man. Like, this, it, it was, I'm all for a difficult game. I play Dark mm-hmm. Souls. I play really hard games, Ninja Gaiden, things like that. And there's there's a point where it's, just unfair to the player in my opinion and when you turn up the difficulty in a game i understand it's supposed to be unfair to the player you have to adapt but when i'm playing on normal yeah i thought that it was a little bit too harsh at times with the sword elites with the the flood can get really overwhelming at times so you know it, and i and i mentioned that to masters and he said that basically exactly what you said the they want people to replay this they want people to develop tactics they want people you know to add to that replayability and I'm all for that. I just thought for a normal difficulty, it was a little, little harsh. And, the, mm. you know, the people like freaking Mythic Tyrant and all them who are like tackling this game on Legendary and then Mythic, Mythic difficulty. I, wow. Noble, Noble difficulty. Or, yeah, 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 they noble, changed noble. it from the original. It used to be Mythic, but now it's Noble. Yeah, like but that yeah, is I'm not crazy. Touch, I'm not touching Noble. No. No. <laughs> I don't even think I'm touching Heroic, <laughs> man. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm doing that either. <laughs> like, so like if people are wondering, like Easy is not in this game. Like the, it starts off on Normal. That is the lowest difficulty setting. So I highly and recommend not, starting on yeah. that. And if you are like a god, then, you know, move on up. Yeah, but, if uh, you're a mythic tyrant when it comes to playing exactly. campaigns, then, yeah, then you'll be tested heavily on normal. Yes, yes. But, uh, like, normal and SPV3 really does play, like, that sweet swap between heroic and legendary, where it's like, yeah. I have to think about what I'm doing and be, you know, precise with my movements, but I'm not, like, overly dying like you would in legendary but you right, have to be exactly. conscious of your movements you can't just like go around and click 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 everything's dead no you, like you definitely have to adapt. Normal. <laughs> yeah you have to adapt yeah. on the like if you die you have to learn from that mistake all right well i need to throw a nade here or try to get a sticky uh, in there you know things like that hmm. i got a question for you what was your favorite uh gun in spv3 slash lemoria um i like that sentinel like uh sniper rifle i thought that was a really cool um yeah, like the ones like it was like a per- shot, like it was like purple, right? And it yeah. shot like a beam. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh my god, that thing slayed! It's a freaking OP, it's, man. That thing was awesome. So good. Like I had like one of those uh, honor guard elites happen. I think on that mission is one of the missions in uh, Lemoria. And like I, the first time I died a couple times, like I streamed it, I died a few times against them. Like God, this guy's ridiculously hard. And then I was able to grab save that uh, sentinel beam for the end. I just melted him instantly oh, with them. Yeah. Like this thing is crazy. Yeah. That and probably those hunter fuel rods, like being able to use the fuel rod cannon from the hunters is pretty freaking awesome. Mm-hmm. And there was like different variations on them. I didn't really like that yeah. shade turret version, but the other two versions, like the regular green one and the orange one, were really cool. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely liked, uh, I had two favorite guns. Well, I like, oh, my, well, three, because one of them, my go to gun was definitely like the brute shot was yeah. super strong. Yeah, it's, it's in strong. SPV3. It's really good. Um, and then I say, I, my, 
favorite guns. I really liked what they did with uh, this. Uh, this, uh, this is what they did in Lemoria. I think it might be different in SPV3, but the DMR that's in Lemoria oh, plays yeah. much more like a single shot, like semi automatic sniper, sniper rifle. Yeah. Which is something that like Halo through Halo's sandbox is actually kind of missed, I feel, mm -hmm. which is what kind of like the DMR is trying to fill up, but it plays more like a longer range BR than really like a sniper rifle. Right. Or like a semi autic sniper. So I think they changed that with Lemoria, and I thought that was super cool. And it plays really well. The, the recoil on it kicks like crazy. Yeah, it does. But, uh, that's because you can get like one hit shot headshots with it if you line it up properly. And then um, I really liked the. Um, variant of like a brute plasma rifle that they added in where basically like the first few shots fire really rapid fire and then it slows down afterwards but uh it just shreds shields instantly you can just like then swap to like your magnum or whatever and get a headshot kind of thing on them yeah. so i really like those two weapons especially especially like the dmr i thought it was like the take on it I was like oh this is what the dmr should be yeah yeah, definitely. I think we both mentioned too in both of our reviews that we like the carbine a lot. I really like the revision mm -hmm. to the carbine where it's just overheats and it's more in line with other Covenant weapons. Uh, instead yeah. of having to do the reload, I thought that was a pretty cool addition. And like the BR being able to be single shot or three round burst was when you're zoomed in is was really cool. I wish they would add that to Halo games having like an alternate rate of fire. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's straight from the, uh, the Halo 2 E3 demo. That's how the yeah. battle rifle yep. shot in that. Yeah, thought that was pretty cool they did that for the game i guess to close out our thoughts um i can't wait to see what this team does if when they enable mods on mcc like what they're gonna be able to do with with that on pc that's gonna be like really fun to look oh forward my to God. So. can you imagine just like custom campaigns for oh, halo 3 ah yeah. that'd be so good <laughs> I would love yeah. that. That's one thing I'm actually really hoping for Infinite when it comes to the Forge, if people can like create their own campaign missions. It is certainly possible. Like I saw Far Cry 5 did that with their map editor. Yep. You yeah, can I think add AI in there. That too. You can, mm -hmm. you can uh, Odyssey, where you can make your own missions. Doom had like, you know, spawnable AI and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which I really hope Halo adds in their Forge mode. So yeah, it's definitely possible. I think yeah. it's kind of expected at this point with all these other games doing it. You know, I kind of I would be slightly disappointed if that would be the yeah that that script. that would be the true next evolution of Forge would be able exactly. to add AI and so you can make your own campaign missions. Exactly. And if they can find a way to, if they can find a way to make resource management proper when it comes to that, and if you can actually even tweak AI per, like uh, habits as well, that would be really nice. But obviously yeah. we're getting we're getting a little bit up beyond like we're getting a little ranty on that stuff. So that could be yeah. another podcast. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. When we need some topics, we'll definitely make sure to, uh, make sure to bring that one up. But mm -hmm. yeah, I guess we'll uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up this podcast episode two of the Halo Outreach Podcast. Always a fun time talking some Halo with you, Kevin. I really enjoy just ranting about Halo. It's really <laughs> one of the only things in life I could just talk every day about so i'm glad we're doing this this weekly you know oh yeah for sure me too man like we definitely we packed as much as we could with this uh this podcast every touch on some rather yeah, we we, 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 pretty much every topic we discussed we could make our own podcast episode on really oh came out yeah, like there by yeah really yeah <laughs> we originally planned for spv3 to be in the last podcast but um i mean yeah that that could alone if we really want to go in depth could it be its own thing and mm -hmm. uh, maybe we'll do, you know, another playthrough or something and, and, and do like a, you know, going back to it and see what we think afterwards. Because um, it, it has changed. You know, we could change some settings around and make it a better experience for us. So mm -hmm. uh, it's now officially out on release. If you guys are interested in downloading SPV3, just note you need a custom a copy of Halo Custom Edition. Um, go ahead and get a copy of that. And then on their Reddit, uh, Reddit their subreddit, they have one called SPV3 everything you need to know about how to download it and some walkthroughs and stuff. Everybody's pretty helpful in there. So if you guys want to download that, go ahead. Me and Kevin definitely highly recommend you do it. If you are a fan of halo, mm -hmm. which I would hope you are, if you're listening to us right now. So, and I would um, say, yeah. if you, I'm sorry. I would, I would say also, if you have any questions, you definitely want to join our discord. Yep. Cause they're yep. very, the developers on there are very active. They're willing to help you out and answer any questions for the most part. If they're like, yeah, obviously they're, they are humans. So they're not going to be on there like 24 hours, but like, you know, they're rather responsive yeah. on there. They're willing to help you out and try to get you the experience. Cause they want people to play this, you know? Yeah. This I'm is their passion sure project. Sleeps, dude. I think like every time <laughs> I message him, he's, he's 
<laughs> and it's been like totally different times. Like, like he mm. is, he is an animal. Um, you mean they what? can be hit up on Twitter too. I think they have their own Twitter mm. accounts and yep. SPV three has its own Twitter account too. So are you playing the meetup with masters over in Philadelphia? Right. I talked to him and he, uh, he had some stuff come up with family. So, um, he won't be making it to oh, Philly anymore. Yeah. It's a bummer, but I completely understand. Uh, but yeah, he's been, he's just been an awesome member of the community. So, Mm-hmm. masters if you're listening to this shout out to you buddy thank you for everything uh thank you for being so friendly and that's what makes the halo community so great man there's mm-hmm. a lot of good people in this community very but, pa- um, we're a very passionate group of exactly. fans like I've, I've definitely tried i've definitely tried integrating myself within various other communities like before halo like i tried doing call of duty i tried doing battlefield but no community like Halo is so no, passionate about their game. It's unparalleled, man. And it's so unparalleled. many different aspects of it people are passionate about as well. It's not just like a multiplayer game like most game shooter games are. There's oh, yeah. so much more to it. And that's yeah, why... Halo's like the Star Wars of gaming, yeah. man. That's you why... Know, it's I, yeah, just... it's, it's, it's like a... It's such a great legacy as well. And it's looked upon so fondly. And yeah. uh, there's so many ways to enjoy Halo. It's more than yeah. just like pew pew aliens <laughs> yeah it's just it's, it stretches across all mediums like exactly. it's everywhere mm-hmm. yeah and i can't wait to see the future of it especially with that tv show oh my gosh yes um but yeah maybe we'll touch on that actually there are some things we can podcast about the tv show there's some slight news that came out so maybe we'll talk about that but um yeah this is run on longer than we expected once again but yes this is probably going to be a <laughs> weekly thing because we just love halo so much passionate so i hope you guys enjoyed this video you could find uh this podcast on spotify we're working to get it on itunes it's on our Podbean, and of course on kevin's youtube channel um i'll go ahead and tell you where you could find me and then kevin you tell everybody where you they could find you um you, know, you could find me at patman gaming on youtube on twitter it is fear underscore the underscore patman xbox is fear the patman Twitch, Fear the Patman, Mixer, Fear the Patman, and finally on Instagram, Patman Gaming. So go ahead and head over to Kevin's channel and check out the podcast if you guys want it in video form. I always put some gameplay or something in the background so you guys could watch. It's not just pure audio. And uh, Kevin, where can people find you at? Um, main platforms would be YouTube, which would be just be Kevin Kulak. So that's a K on the cool and same thing with Twitch as well. Kevin Coolx with a K. Uh, if you want me, hit me up on Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter. That's where actually I retweet a lot of uh, news and info about Halo through my Twitter. If you want to catch, uh, at that, catch up with that, it's at Kevin Coolx Halo, all in one word. With the K on the cool as well. I know it's a little continuity here. And um, <laughs> I'm also on Instagram. You could probably guess Kevin Coolx when it comes to that one as well. And uh, I also got a Discord channel as well. Uh, if it, you'll find it on the YouTube videos, I always have it linked in there. And um, yeah, you can catch me pretty much on those. Or also, if you just, pretty much if you just type in Kevin Cool X with a K and then Halo after that, you'll probably find me somewhere. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, appreciate everybody listening. Thank you guys so much. This isn't possible without the viewers. So. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave the like if you're on YouTube. Subscribe to our channels to stay up to date on all your Halo news. And we will see you guys next week on the next episode of the Halo Reach podcast. Thank you very much, guys. Have a good day.